47. Gallium chloride is formed by the reaction of 2.6 liters of a 1.44 uh, molarity solution of HCl, according to the following equation. And then they give us 2Ga plus 6HCl yields 2GaCl3 plus 3H2. Uh, and then letter A, it says outline the steps necessary to determine the number of moles and the mass of gallium chloride. So the first thing I got to figure out is which one of these is gallium chloride, right? Well, it's got to be the compound that has gallium in it and it has chlorine in it. Not this one. Not this one. Ah, this guy. So they want us to find the moles and the mass of GaCl3. Cool. So the first thing is, is, you know, I'm going to just write out the balanced equation again because I just like to look at things bigger because I can't see. So, yeah. <laughs> 2 GaCl3 and then 3H2. Perfect. Now, I do notice that they gave us coefficients in the front, right? There's a 2 for the GA, there's a 6, there's a 2, and there's a 3. This means that the balanced equation, it's already balanced. So I don't have to, you know, work with it. So that's like a little, you know, gift. So thank you. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to list out the information that they gave me on my balanced equation. So... They told me that I had 2.6 liters of a 1.44 molarity solution of HCl. Remember, when you have a volume and a molarity that's attached with a of a, they, they go together. And they told us that it was for HCl. So I'm just going to go to HCl, and I'm just going to write out that I have 2.6 liters and 1.44 molarity. Okay, so I got information on hydrochloric acid. But then they're asking us to find the moles and the mass of gallium chloride. So I need to find the moles of this and the grams of this, which is the mass, right, guys? Okay. Now, I notice that they gave me information for one compound, and I'm looking for the information of another compound. This is what stoichiometry is all about. Basically, stoichiometry is doing dimensional analysis and using ratios with a balanced equation. Now, when we're doing stoichiometry, there's, there's a general flow diagram that you guys should know, and it's this one. I'll just put this down here. So the flow diagram is always grams to moles to moles to grams, grams to moles to moles to grams. That's the, that's the generality. But you could get rid of stuff if you don't use it. You can add stuff in. But the general one is grams to moles to moles to grams. Now, I color-coded this. The A's, or the reds, are the information for the compound that you already have. And the blues, a.k.a. the B's, those are what you're trying to solve for. And that's why I secretly put this in red and this in blue. You see how they gave us information for HCl? That's the red side. We're looking for gallium chloride... So that's going to be the blue side. But now let's see. Do I have grams of HCl? No. Do I have moles of HCl? No. Well, from this information, which one can I find out? Oh, I can find the moles of HCl, right? So if I label this as A, the first thing I got to figure out is find moles of HCl, right? Because A says, you know, outline the steps, well, whatever. But we have to find the moles of HCl. And remember, the formula for molarity and moles and liters is molarity equals moles divided by liters. We have a molarity, we have a volume, so we can solve for the moles. If I just rearrange this formula, it would be moles equals molarity times liters. This is easier. So I'm just going to do it this way. The moles is the molarity, which is 1.44 times the 2.6. They already gave it to me in the correct units. I have liter and molarity, so I'm good. I don't have to even convert. 
So the moles of HCl would be 1.44 times 2.6. If we're doing sig figs here, technically it should be two sig figs because 2.6 only has two sig figs. So I'll just say 3.7 moles. Okay. So that's the first thing, and that's the first step. We had to find the moles of HCl. Now in this case, in our specific case, I don't even care about the grams. I'm starting here. So, goodbye. Eee. And now I'm just going to cater this to what I need. I'm going to say that I have 3.7 moles of not A anymore, but of HCl. And I'm going to go to the moles that they asked me, you know, that they wanted me to know. So instead of B, I'm going to say that it's the GaCl3, the gallium chloride. And then from there, I could find out the uh, grams of the gallium chloride. And this is my little flow diagram. So that's all of A in a nutshell. We have to find the moles of HCl, which we did, and then once we found that out, then we just do these two steps, right? Because they want moles and they want grams. So let's do the calculations. With this flow, all we're doing is we're just, you know, doing dimensional analysis, aka ratios. So start with what you're given, 3.7. I'll color code this so I have moles of HCl. Now, remember, with any dimensional analysis and conversions, all we're doing is multiplying by some ratio, right? What works best, I think, is put in your units first and then go back and fill it in with the numbers. Don't try to do both at once. So I say to myself, okay, I don't want mole of HCl, so that has to go on the opposite side. So mole of HCl on the bottom. And then I just look and I see, okay, oh, I can go to mole of the GaCl3. So mole of GaCl3 on the top. So my units are accounted for, but now the question is, what are the numbers that are going to be on the top and the bottom? Well, here's something new, and this is what stoichiometry is. There's only basically one new thing for stoichiometry, is if you have a mole-to-mole -mole ratio, where you see a mole and a mole on top and the bottom, and it's of different compounds or different molecules, the only relationship that these guys have is through the balanced equation. So when you're converting from moles of one compound to moles of another compound, you got to use the balance equation, BE, balance equation. And when that's the case, you're basically just looking at the coefficients. Only pay attention to the elements or the compounds that you care about. I only care about gallium chloride, and I only care about HCl. In front of the gallium chloride, I see that I have a 2. So... I'm going to put a 2 in front of the GaCl3. In front of the HCl, I see that I have a 6. So I'm going to put a 6 down here. There's my numbers. Everything is accounted for. So now I'm just going to cancel out the units that cancel. And since this is one of the answers that I want, they wanted moles of gallium chloride, I'm just going to say equal. Now you can simplify this if you want, right? This 2 will cancel out to a 1, and this will be a 3. But you can just multiply by 2 and divide by 6. So I'm going to say 3.7 times 2 divided by 6. Sticking with the two sig figs, I have 1.2 moles of gallium chloride. OK. One part down. Now I just need to do the other part. OK. But it was just a continuation, right? I wanted moles, and now I want grams. I'm right here. I just found out that I have 1.2 moles of gallium chloride, and I want to go to grams of gallium chloride. So I'm just going to treat it like another conversion. I have 1.2, and then I'm just going to put this in blue, mole of gallium chloride. I'm 
doing a ratio, right? So I'm, I'm multiplying by that ratio. I work with the units first, and then I go back and I place my numbers. So I don't want this unit anymore. So that goes on the bottom. So mole of GaCl3 on the bottom. I just look over to see what the actual unit is, and I want grams of GaCl3 on the top. So the units are there. Now I just go back and I say, well, what are the actual numbers here? Well, this is now a gram and mole conversion with the same compound. We've done these over and over and over again, right? This was like a couple of chapters ago. Whenever you're converting from moles to grams in the same compound, we use the periodic table. So get your periodic tables out, guys. Remember, when we're doing periodic table conversions, there's always one mole, right? One mole. So wherever the word mole is, you put a one there. This amount is actually going to be the mass on the periodic table of three galliums, uh, sorry, of one gallium and three chlorine. So I'm going to my periodic table. Each chlorine is 35.45, so it times up by three, and then add one gallium, and gallium is 69.72. So I get 176.07. And then maybe just like extend this a little bit. Cool. Everything is accounted for here. So now I can just cancel equal. And since this number is on the top, it's multiplication. So I just take that number and times it by 1.2. Three sig figs. So 211. 211 grams of gallium chloride uh, would be produced. So to just basically sum this up, right? If you had 2.6 liters of a 1.44 molarity solution and you're mixing it with gallium metal, you would produce a max, a theoretical yield of 211 grams of gallium chloride. That's it. And just know that these are the same amount, right? Moles and grams of the same compound is the same amount. It's just different units. Right? It's kind of like saying 12 eggs and a dozen. They mean the same thing, but just different units. All right? So hopefully that helps. Let me know in the comments. Um, I hope you guys are studying hard, and good luck on any of your future tests and quizzes. And if you guys are in physics or math, um, we'd love to ha help you out with that as well. We have tons of videos on those if you want to go to the, the front of the channel and check out our playlist. We have a lot of videos, so... <laughs> We try to keep everything uh, nice and organized for you guys with our playlists. So I hope you guys can find everything you're looking for. And anyway, um, have an awesome day. All right? Keep studying hard. You got this. I'll see you later. Bye.